Come in, Ether. This is Barbo Observatory. Are you receiving this? Is anyone out there? When George approached me about the project, he said this would be like Revenant and um, Gravity in one. We're not receiving anything. That puts our last contact with Mission Control at Three weeks. Why is it so quiet? I started first um, doing camera tests in, in Berlin and then uh, Christoph Hofsten, he showed me all the DNA lenses, he showed me all the 65mm lenses, he, you know, um, had talked to Ari London, they had sent over the 58T and we loved all of that. While we were shooting, there was a lot of gear to manage. We had three 65s with us, we had two mini LFs with us, quite a big package to carry around. I loved the idea of 65 because of the big landscapes we had in Iceland and to see all the detail in space, the detail you get in faces and how immersive that is. Oh my God. We use the mini LFs sometimes. We use them in space. We use them for some of the action sequences where we wanted to have handheld. Uh, cameras quite close to the action, or I wanted to shoot some of the space work. I wanted to shoot that on Steadicam. There's your radar. Yep. Matt Casimir, our visual effects supervisor, he brought up the idea of using virtual cameras to do a lot of this work in space. They had a 3D model and a rough animation of the action of the spacewalk. You know, you had um, the little 3D characters who travel along the spaceship and the whole spacewalk sequence we designed by doing shots with uh, an iPad and then, you know, giving them to the editors. George and I had talked about a lot of the shots and we put it together and then uh, we choreographed the whole scene, that and the airlock scene. What that looks like now is very close to what we had planned and what we had pre-edited. We got hooked on the DNA lenses and also because they have the ability, you can detune them to your taste. We didn't want everything to be too perfect, we wanted the lens to have character. We liked it that it was, you know, fall off in sharpness to the edges or that it would be maybe a little bit darker in some lenses. And with the detuning also you get your level of sharpness and detail you want and it's just like you, you make your own lenses. I have to warn them about the conditions on Earth. The 58T is a beautiful lens for lens flare. And then you have to find the balance so, you know, it doesn't destroy the con you know, what you want to show. It just adds character. Matt Casimir introduced me to a few techniques which I didn't know before. So. The ILM system was an amazing thing because that gave us all the views from Babo. No touching. We started testing that and were just amazed because it's A, you know, we had this set with really huge windows. We could even shoot from the outside looking in and have the reflections of the landscape there. There's a shot when Augustine takes a coffee in the morning and he looks out and he sees the antenna and you see it all in the reflection and it's all in camera. I think it's amazing. When we knew we had to copy some of the, or uh, recreate some of the snowstorm in the studio, my gaffer had introduced me to a system where we use the Roscoe rear projection. We put half of our um, studio um, background, that was a wall basically like 50 meters long and, and 8 meters high. We put up that Roscoe screen and we put a lot of sky panels behind. We made it basically wide, but what happens if you're in a snowstorm, it, it's not constantly wide, it changes. You know, the light is sometimes the clouds are thicker or thinner and then you get modulation. And we programmed that into, the, into our background wall. And it was amazing because it looked so real. And it's something, if you had shot against white, you wouldn't have that 
realism. And it's subtle, but it's always there and it gives you a realism, which is amazing. Also, at the end of that sequence, you know, um, we think almost our main character, Augustine, he breaks down and we think he's dying, but then the snow stops. And in that transition from big heavy snowstorm into sun breaking through, we created that in the studio. And that was challenging, but I think it works quite well. In Iceland, in the snowstorm, you pack up the camera into a lot of plastic because the snow would really creep into every gap. I had a light meter which was totally frozen because I didn't see in my pocket. Our Icelandic crew was genius in knowing that and, and um, guiding us through that, but it was always a logistical question, it was always a question of you know, safety as well. Your own life is just slipping away. That's why I have to contact them. Before it's too late.